Well, do violent video games cause violence? Underlying fear expressed by parents during public hearings that video games lead to violence. And the gun violence has more to do with video game weapons than, than real ones. Right? Are they going to become violent just by playing Grand Auto Theft and Halo and these games? There's been plenty of research out there which shows a link between violent video games and aggression. Violent video games increase aggressive behavior. These video games to me are, are murder simulators is what they are. It he was trained to kill with Call of Duty and other video games. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. It's a tale as old as time. A new craze or idea catches on in societies across the world. Many people approve of it, and many others condemn it. Going so far back as the first century when Christianity started popping up, and the Roman Empire had banned this new religion that they feared. Or in the fourth century when Aristotle claimed the earth was round, but his theory was still opposed by people who believed it to be flat. The same thing happened when newspapers started getting popular, and they were accused of ruining social interaction, just as the smartphones and mobile devices we have today are claimed to be doing the same thing. There's always something in this world of ours that is destroying the very fabric of society. Centuries ago, it was the pamphleteers who were mm -hmm. scolded for dragging down society. In the 50s, it was comic books, and in the 60s, it was the Beatles. And at one hearing, a so-called forensic scientist said one comic promotes sadistic fantasies to kids. That comic was Superman. To try to blame Shakespeare and the violence in Shakespeare and the violence in art uh, for violence that happens in the real world is something that's been tried for years and is always wrong. Whenever a new form of media comes out that particularly older generations don't use and don't understand, it's very, very common for that new media to be blamed for a variety of social ills. It's the same old song and dance, you know, rock and roll and everything that you want to pick from the, throughout the years. And now in the modern era, the new craze that has faced opposition for the last 40 years is video games. There have been an enormous amount of reports, articles, discussions, and research into the correlation between video games and real-life negative consequences. The key words, violent video games, are often at the forefront of these reports. Some of them would have you believe playing Grand Theft Auto will make you want to steal a car, or that Watch Dogs teaches gamers how to hack into tablets and spy on people in their own homes. This game is teaching people to hack in to that to whatever is docked in your bedroom. Some articles claim there really is no problem, but if you've ever read a Darwin Awards book, you know that there are a lot of dumb people in this world that do stupid shit, die, and or kill people because they are fucking stupid. You know, I don't think video games make people do stupid things, but sometimes they make stupid people do stupid things. I've gone through tons of different articles, videos, and research on the subject, both for and against violent video games. And both sides, no matter the source, are always phrased differently, but with the same message. Video games are responsible for real-life turmoil, and video games are not responsible. With such massive coverage and in-depth research into the subject, join me as I take an in-depth look at both sides and examine this 40-year war against gaming. The graphics are so good, this attack is eerily realistic. To essentially be a terrorist and kill people. Spent hours playing violent video games like Doom. Cold-blooded murder is making Mortal Kombat the most popular video game but in history. But now, a full-scale battle has been joined between the video game industry and its opponents. It's hard to think of anything that has changed so rapidly and quickly as the video game medium, aside from the technology itself coming from something as simple as two rectangles hitting a square to a full-fledged interactive movie that can look as real as any Hollywood production, with characters that make you care, a universe you can feel immersed in, and a fun factor you can share with your friends and family. As technology has improved, so has the level of realism that video games create. 
but there is something within gaming's lifetime that hasn't changed. Something beyond the graphics, the controller, the platform it's played on, or the gamers who buy it. What hasn't changed is the war against them. While games in this 40-year time period have evolved into a legitimate art form and business that employs thousands of people, the same old, tired arguments are used to vilify video games and the people that buy them. The examples are countless, since the days of pinball machines and Pong in the 1970s to the current age of Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, and numerous other franchises. These people, we'll call them anti-gamers, have maintained a constant war against video games they believe simulate and promote murder, rape, robbery, and other despicable crimes. In 1976, an arcade game called Death Race was criticized by the media for having the player run over gremlins that apparently resembled stick figures, which could resemble real people given if you could somehow see this indescribable series of pixels as a human being. In hindsight, this Death Race could be seen as the progenitor of the Grand Theft Auto series. In the early 1980s, Ronnie Lamb sought legislation that would control the proximity of which a gaming arcade could be created around schools, a legal restraining order against video games. In 1992, the original Mortal Kombat was released, being one of the first highly publicized games to portray blood and gore to such a degree. It sparked a massive media outrage that led to the creation of the ESRB in the United States and various other game rating systems across the world. The Entertainment Software Rating Board, a company whose sole purpose is to regulate and assign ratings to video games so that people who buy the games know what type of content they will be seeing in it. It's important to note that video games have been targeted and attacked by a metric fuck ton of groups, gun enthusiasts and the NRA, feminists, SJWs, religious folk, pastors, and Christian leaders. Criticism has come from the government of the United States and probably some European countries, and down under, from careful or paranoid parents. And of course, the conglomerate of news media. Video games have been so controversial that cases and laws have gone as far as reaching the Supreme Court. These are the ones we'll be taking a look at, except feminists and SJWs, that'll be its own video. So we've taken a look at a brief history of the war on video games in the past, and there's so many examples that it's unrealistic to list them all in a single video. But now let's look at the actual arguments and people who sought to condemn video games. So video games, those things are taking many people to help. Ah, religion. The great opposition of nearly every scientific or artistic advancement in the last 2,000 years. Just as they took a stance against the round earth theory, so too do some religious leaders take a stance against video games. There are young gals in this church, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful young gals, and you know why they can't get a date? Because that retarded spirit got on the young men. <laughs> He then went on to curse the Xbox in the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh my god, now that's just fucking ridiculous. And don't even get me started on the Xbox. Fucking boys remote control for your television! There are many people who seek religion for advice and guidance on their lives to hopefully lead them down a better path. But would you believe that in recent years people have sought answers from the Bible on video games? He says, I was wondering in today's world of video games, is there any insight to this in the Bible? What does the Bible say about video games? <laughs> you heard that right. There are actually people on this planet who sought advice about video games from the freaking Bible. Now while this video and channel has everything disabled, the insight he gives is actually not bad. Basically he says if you're addicted to video games and if they're detrimental to your health, job, education, or relationships, then it might be best to avoid them. And if video games don't cause problems with those areas of your life, then you're probably fine with playing them. Now we can't overtly say that video games are a sin because the Bible doesn't speak of video games. It was written long before video games. However, this next man is far less reasonable, stating an ultimatum that would make Obi-Wan cringe. If you were playing a video game, and that video game contains things that are sinful, then that is, that's wrong. 
sounds like all the gears in this guy's head were working at maximum speed in order to articulate this basic as fuck sentence. In that video game contains things that are sinful. Now let's turn this own guy's logic against him. If you are reading a book that contains things that are sinful, then then that's wrong. This man probably doesn't even know that there are video games based off the Bible. But we'll just gloss over the animal abuse in Super Noah's Ark 3D. This finely dressed gentleman seeks to prove that video games are a causation of violent crime. Let's hear what he has to say. Well, uh, first of all, John, God, uh, God understands violence. Uh, okay, you could have picked a better or, you know, even relevant opening statement, but continue. Uh, his son, uh, Jesus Christ, was nailed uh, to a tree uh, for our sins and died for our sins, and God raised him to life. God understands uh, violence. All right, as much as I'd like to respond to the absurdity of this statement and the lack of relevance it has to the subject, I'm just going to say that religion, any religion, has absolutely no authority on the video game industry. None. But we certainly can tax them, John. Uh, we, we can tax violence. So why don't we try that? Uh, we, we do that to cigarettes, uh, alcohol. Why not, why not tax violence? Right, because taxing addictive substances known to cause cancer and are two of the biggest preventable causes of death in the U.S. is the exact same thing as taxing a video game where you shoot people. I should have expected such profound, undeniable logic from a religious zealot. But here's the most important statement he makes. Listen, I've had uh, guns all my life. My father gave me my first gun when I was nine years old. Now far be it from me to criticize the cultural norms of our beautiful Confederate Southerners. But is he seriously arguing that giving a nine-year-old a violent video game is more damaging than giving him a physical handgun? Everyone I grew up with had guns, uh, but we didn't go around shooting people. Yes, you didn't go around shooting people because you weren't fucking insane. Just as most people who play violent video games don't go around shooting people because they aren't insane and their parents didn't give them a firearm at nine years of age. The majority of the Christians who speak on video games are overtly negative, but there are a couple like this guy, Pastor Bob, who actually have interesting and important things to say on the matter. And I think if we followed things that everybody told us that Christians should or should not do, we'd be exhausted and we'd be paralyzed. You know, some things you really have to decide for yourself, and this is one of those kinds of decisions. The unreasonable ones advocate for blind restriction, while the more compassionate Christians say it's up to you, and I think that's more important. This channel right here is probably the worst of them all. 10 facts about hell you're not being told. 10 facts about the mark of the beast Satan doesn't want you to know. Someone should check the Bible and see if clickbait is a sin, because if so, this dude is gonna burn. If we set our minds on things which are not godly, which are worldly, which are sinful, they will have a negative impact on our character. And I think that's a plan of the devil. He wants to bombard us with violence so that we are so desensitized that when people hear the gospel, it has little effect on them. The devil wants to desensitize us? Well, what about those games where you actually, you know, fucking kill the devil or some evil forces? I mean, is a game like Doom so bad for having all that Satanistic imagery? Inside of these video games is, is actually the devil and the demons. Their, 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 their influence is there, their presence is there, but you can't see it with the natural eye. Dude, we're fucking killing all of that shit. That's a good thing. If anything, we're preparing to kill demons. When the rapture comes, who's to say Satan isn't going to make a move, eh? The most ironic part of these Christians being against violent video games is they talk about how detrimental that violence is, but at the same time they wear a necklace of a man nailed to a cross. They preach the Bible but fail to make the connection that violence can be a source of learning. It's a tool used by storytellers and the very same ones that wrote the Bible. I mean, is the story of David and Goliath detrimental to society because he cut off Goliath's head? Would the crucifixion of Jesus have been a source of powerful imagery if he had just been buried alive? Would we all be wearing necklaces of dirt instead of the cross? My point is, you can't just condemn any violent medium because it contains violence. Especially if you use religious texts as a source and then ignore the violence within your own beliefs, teachings, or religion. Now what these religious folk seem incapable of understanding is the separation of church and s**t. 
separation of fantasy from reality. And to summarize this religious section, I found the perfect comment. I am a Christian, and I play video games like Battlefield and Grand Theft Auto, but I don't let it affect me because it is a video game. I, I really, I don't play video games, I don't understand video games. games. I've never played a video game, I hate to tell you that. No, what is it called, that. Art of War, Man of War, what are the kids playing? Uh, I don't know anything about the dopey game. I, I don't do this kind of stuff. If there's anything that discredits most of the anti-gamers and their arguments against gaming, it's two things. Their inability to understand the difference between fantasy and reality, and their lack of experience with video games. That makes them look severely out of touch. These games rewire your brain. They rewire. We don't even know what they do yet. This is brand new stuff. Like Bill O'Reilly, who can't even be bothered to memorize a three word title that's tossed around in every discussion about violent video games. Are they going to become violent just by playing Grand Auto Theft? Grand Auto Theft? Grand Auto Theft? Grand Auto Theft? It's even the name of a crime, dude. Come on. Many of these people try to pass themselves off as experts in the field, but anybody who actually plays video games can see right through their facade. Like this guy right here. So if you're just out like hitting mushrooms and like going super big and playing Super Mario Brothers. Who the fuck has ever used that type of terminology when referring to a Mario game? Nobody least of all those that have actually played it. A lot of these people sound uneducated. They speak to the ignorant masses who don't play or understand video games, and they form their own circle of ignorance. But gamers will immediately know they are full of shit. If anybody watching isn't a games folk, and if so, rude. I want to point out that games can do a lot of stuff that isn't murder. There's The Sims. There's Minecraft. That's all I can think of off the top of my head. Now is this guy just shitting out a video? Or, or is he really even a gamer? You honestly can't think of any other video games that don't contain murder besides Minecraft and The Sims. What about nearly every sports game ever made? Crash Bandicoot, Custom Robo, Kirby Air Ride, Sonic, Pac-Man, what about puzzle games? Would you count Lego Star Wars as a game that has murder in it? What about Guitar Hero, Rock Band, all those rhythm games? Instantly, this guy has lost all credibility because he looks out of touch. Generally, we all seek advice on things from people who we believe know what the fuck they're talking about. A source needs to be credible for us to even consider believing its validity. But even if someone has the credibility, they can still make shit arguments. It's easy to understand why gamers get so outraged when they see these people acting like they know what they're talking about. Because to them, they're simply trivializing and generalizing gaming culture. A large portion of the anti-gamers are probably people that grew up in the 70s and 80s, and they obviously don't have any personal experience with games or gaming culture, but for some reason they all think they're an authority on the subject and that their thoughts matter. Like this turd nozzle who isn't even sure if video games have a rating system. And I believe there yeah. is warning on a lot of these games. What? Is it there for what? adult content only? Like, dude, have you ever even bothered to look at a cover of a game? Or go into a store and talk to the people? or a 30 second Google search before you come on the news and start spouting your ignorance? While on the other side, in some of these videos, the people we see defending video games are in an arcade, with their kids, or talk like they actually know what they're talking about. You know, let's be honest, the 20th century with comic books and, um and movies, when those came in, every time there's a new medium, people who don't, as you, who don't have the experience you have of playing them as they grew up, they don't really know what to make of them, so they find them confusing and they find them a bit alienating. When people, when the novel came out, not everybody could read a book, so they didn't have, they weren't literate, so they couldn't understand it fully. In the same way, not everybody can, can physically use a controller, so they have a literacy problem, so they can't really directly engage with the medium, so they can't really understand it. I'm not going to claim to be a psychology expert because I'm not, but you get these psychology experts and I don't believe they've ever played any of these video games and they're sitting there telling us, telling the world, what they say video games are going to make people do or not do and it, it just seems all backwards. People fear what they don't understand and hate what they can't conquer. And it is mostly these people who do not understand video games or gaming culture that feel so empowered to speak out against it.
The bottom line, parents wonder if kids can separate fantasy from the real thing. The second piece of this puzzle is knowing and understanding the separation of reality from fantasy. In a lot of these news reports and the inane ramblings of Glenn Beck, they claim that games like Call of Duty, Battlefield, and others have trained people how to shoot and be killers. But I ask everyone watching this right now, who has ever used a firearm before, was there any shooter you played that has perfectly simulated what it's like to shoot a firearm. A game that perfectly simulated the recoil of a pistol or assault rifle. Does Call of Duty teach you how to run with a firearm? Does a controller have as much weight to it as a shotgun? And to the older NES crowd that might be watching, was Duck Hunt a game that trained you how to shoot plates out of the sky? Of course not, because they're just games that do not and cannot represent reality exactly as it is. You can't use a pair of nunchucks in a video game and then buy a pair of nunchucks and do crazy Bruce Lee shit. Just as you can't shoot a gun in a game and instantly buy a gun and figure out how it works right away. So the argument that shooter games train people and children to be killers is completely absurd. In fact, it's absurd across the board. Now, let's just take a second to look at how out of touch this guy right here is. So what's he gonna do? Is he gonna pull the door open and knock the guy out? Yeah. Whoa! It's just fun to, to kind of engage in mayhem. I don't know. Uh, in New York City. Whoa! What, is he running? Did you just run over that guy? Oh, yeah. Who is that guy? How'd that guy get that? That's not the guy he threw out of the car, is it? No, he was just like wandering in the road. So you just ran over that guy for fun? Look, there's blood all over the front. Yeah. All over. Either this is a faked reaction to simulate the shock for the ignorant grandparents watching the program, or this is a grown-ass man who has been sheltered his entire life, had no friends that played video games, and this is his first experience seeing it. I don't understand how it's fun to ram into someone. Shit, maybe because the game itself is fun to play. Maybe it's super popular and sells a lot of copies for a reason. Maybe people can do these crazy things in video games because the only consequences occur are in the game and not real life. Maybe running over aliens is fun for the same reasons running over people is. Maybe we shoot our marines in Halo because they say funny shit. Thank you sir, may I have another? Not. It's not like because I do that that I'd actually shoot a real-life marine, you daft Neanderthal. Uh, let's let's keep using this logic. Does playing Roller Coaster Tycoon train me to be a competent architectural engineer or an expert in business? Does this game train me how to open my own theme park? Does it train me how to construct roller coasters? Of course not, because it's a game. It doesn't represent reality. If you've driven the fastest cars in a Forza Motorsport game, does that mean you could hop into a stock car and race in the NASCAR circuit as a professional? There are some games made to be like simulations, but even then, no simulation can prepare you enough for doing something in the real world. You know, I don't know why he would want to simulate this. If there was a video game where you got hit in the head with a snow shovel, would you want to know what that really felt like? You cannot learn martial arts by simply playing Mortal Kombat or watching Dragon Ball. You need to physically do and perform these things with your own body because it is muscle memory. It's as simple as that. One of the biggest reasons people play games is because they can do things they wouldn't normally be able to do in real life. But it is this lack of understanding the difference between reality and fantasy that causes so many of these anti-gamer arguments to lose all validity. There have been many lawsuits proposed throughout the years which would hamper the game industry's abilities on what they could put in their games and who could buy them. I reckon most people don't care for the legal mumbo jumbo, but gamers should rejoice because most, if not all of these laws, were never passed. Along with California, nine other states passed laws banning the sale of violent video games to children, but legal challenges stopped any of those laws from ever taking effect. Most of the justices uh, really thought this law is too vague. It could be too broadly applied and would be too onerous both on the game developers, the game publishers, and too restrictive for, you know, First Amendment rights of even the minors. In a court of law, the judges would oftentimes find no reasonable or provable correlation between violent or obscene video games and violent actions, or that they were damaging to minors, nor were any of the proposed laws written clearly enough for judges to take them seriously. Most of the time, they were just too vague and the restrictions they proposed were a violation 
violation of the First Amendment. That glorious, beautiful, first goddamn amendment. And to paraphrase one court observer today, Thomas Jefferson didn't have an Xbox, but when it comes to violent video games, no matter how graphic, the government cannot ban their sale to kids because, of course, what Jefferson stood for also protects video games. Probably the most notable opponent of the video game industry was a lawyer by the name of Jack Thompson, who had been featured in many of these news media videos and discussions, and had filed tons of lawsuits against video game producers, retailers, companies, you name it. This guy's Wikipedia page is filled with numerous lawsuits he has filed, with him constantly casting blame and claiming video games were responsible for certain shootings and murders. All of them were struck down. What's funny is Jack Thompson was disbarred, which basically means he is fired from being a lawyer in the United States for the rest of his life. This usually happens because of unethical or criminal conduct, and I think that says a lot when gaming's biggest opponent had his law license revoked. And it says a lot about the cases Jack Thompson tried to make against video games. It all ends up the way it is now because nobody has or could sufficiently prove the causation of violent and obscene video games with real world crime. And from a legal standpoint, that tells us a lot about the war against video games. The judgment from the court was crystal clear that California's statute was flawed in every legal regard. Today, the nation's highest court in a 7-2 decision ruled that law is unconstitutional. The games are protected by the First Amendment. Today's ruling by the court is a clear statement that video games are entitled to the same degree of First Amendment protection as motion pictures, music, and books. Of course, one of the major concerns these anti-gamers propagate is how will all these games affect the impressionable minds of the children? The more children are involved with violence on the screen, that their own behavior may become more aggressive and more violent. And a lot of parents are wanting to know what those games are doing to their kids. Definitely not for children. Definitely not for my children. Yeah, that new factor that was never there before is violent visual imagery inflicted upon children, particularly the video games. Objection! But crime is down. No. Youth offenses are down. Maybe it's good for kids. Are we afraid of our own children? Do we forget that they are citizens too? and entitled to the essential freedom to read? Or do we think our children so evil, so vicious, so simple-minded, that it takes but a comic magazine story of murder to set them to murder, of robbery to set them to robbery? Old-timey dude, you fucking nailed it. Do we think our kids so susceptible to evil that all it takes is a video game about killing to set them to kill? Naturally, adult and teens are able to comprehend things better than younger minds, so of course the more obscene material shouldn't be accessible to kids, but whose job is it to regulate what the children digest in their heads? What do you say to parents who worry it's too, it's too violent, it's not good for the kids? What I recommend is your kids are going to play games, play it with them, you know, so that you can really be there to answer questions and, and help them through that. Jimerson says it all boils down to good parenting. And let me just say, kids hurting other kids isn't some kind of new epidemic like this guy would have you believe. I know a lot of little kids who are playing these games. They're nice little kids, and they're not going out and hurting anyone now. So well, I Well, see, that's not true, Bill. They are hurting. They're hurting their brothers and sisters. They're hurting themselves. As if siblings never fought over who got to go on the swing set first. That's just kids being kids, dude. That's what growing up with brothers and sisters is like. Anyone can testify to that. Look, I think we can all agree a lot of games out there shouldn't be played by children, just like how they shouldn't watch certain movies or TV shows, or how we don't want to swear and do stupid shit in front of them. It's the parents' job to have control of their children and know what they are playing and doing in their younger years. I think it's a wise idea to not have a child play a violent video game, but that recommendation is not because doing so would turn that child into a killer, it's simply because doing so is exposing that child to something that's going to scare him or her. And as parents, our job is to protect our children. If parents are so concerned about violent media affecting their children, they are responsible for what they allow their kids to see. Deflecting blame to the forms of entertainment around us is just bad parenting. It's really that simple. You know, I was talking about this demeaning kid you know, making kids' minds like vegetables. Talk about them out on the street smoking pot. It's all in fun. Would you rather play video games that are violent or go out and beat each other up? Better than getting involved with drugs or something, you know? It's something to do with your time. When they don't have something to do, 
when they're walking the streets, that's when problems are created, not because of machines. The lack of machines causes problems. Other experts say kids need a mix of all kinds of experiences, and that every medium, including video, has something to offer. An example of a violent video game would be GTA 5. Mayhem killing Grand Theft Auto. Playing Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto 5 or Grand Theft Auto. 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 In all my research, the most commonly cited game that allegedly promotes real life violence is, yep, you guessed it. Corey in the house. I'm the new kid, moving in, getting it done, and I'm officially the candidate for having some fun, you know? On the real, though, there's a couple reasons why Grand Theft Auto is the most commonly referenced game. It's because, one, it makes a shit ton of money, two, it's widely popular and recognizable by the ignorant masses, and three, it allows players to do and experience a lot of cultural taboos. But what I can say is that so much attention is pinned on this game because in a few incidents of carjacking or violent crime, the perpetrator said something about Grand Theft Auto. And when there's a shooting, oh, he played Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. It cost this. That's not really a fair thing to say. It's, it's, a, it's a popular scapegoat. But is it really fair to demonize this series of games? Is it fair to claim Rockstar is run by a bunch of sociopaths and they need to be permanently shut down? I'm out to shut down Rockstar because they're, oh, oh yeah, because they're, they're run by a bunch of sociopaths uh, and they're a one company crime wave. Are these handful of cases amongst the millions of people who have bought and played these games worth all of this commotion? Of course not, but that hasn't stopped people from making bombastic claims such as this. A callous, corrupt, and corrupting shadow industry that sells and stows violence against its own people through vicious, violent video games. Isn't fantasizing about killing people as a way to get your kicks really the filthiest form of pornography? The irony of this statement is this dude is the vice president of the NRA, and he is blaming real-world violence on video games. Right, because the NRA doesn't have anything to do with guns or, or violence. They don't lobby for more lenient gun policies. Not, not, not. See, it's those violent video games that are to blame. I think in reality, this is just a way for him to deflect any sort of blame from the mass shootings that have been happening onto video games. I really think that's all it is. You see, the argument against restricting games like Grand Theft Auto is a slippery slope. Because if we as a society make arbitrary decisions in what developers can put in their games, what what is acceptable if the government is creating legislation and laws on what is acceptable, then this just creates a tight stranglehold on free speech and freedom of expression. Because there's a difference, there's a very slippery slope between freedom of speech and art. Uh, because then kind of who sits judge and jury. Now, obviously there are some independent games that can't be regulated and that can be pretty fucked up like kindergarten killers, but those are independent games, not made by people within the industry. And there are some games out there that have been in the industry that deserve all the criticism they receive. And even gamers can vouch for this. For example, the infamous Atari porn game Custer's Revenge, a game that no joke is about having sex with a Native American woman tied to a pole. Or Ride to Hell Retribution, with it portraying you having sex with a woman in the same room you murdered the people who apparently kept her captive. And it's overall shitty gameplay. Or something like Chiller, which would have been available to play in a public arcade by anyone. A game that showed graphic torture. And as I said, Mortal Kombat was criticized by the media and other outlets, and it became the catalyst that led to the creation of the ESRB, a company which should exist because there does need to be some form of regulation. But just as it was with alcohol in the Prohibition era, too much restrictions and regulation will invariably lead to problems. Pretty much every single negative report on Grand Theft Auto fails to mention any sort of positivity within the game. What if the story provides valuable insight into real world issues? What if players learn more about a particular culture? What if they made some friends playing through the game? Of course they wouldn't mention that. Number one, because it doesn't make for a juicy dramatic story, and two, it doesn't fit their agenda. GTA, in all its incarnations, has certainly become the poster child for many of these news websites and organizations to put on a platform and condemn. And they do this as if Grand Theft Auto 
represents gamers and the industry as a whole. What made Grand Theft Auto 3 the first major breakout hit in the series so memorable wasn't the fact that you could go around clubbing people with baseball bats or shooting them in the back of the head with guns, but the fact that it was an open, 3D, living, breathing world where you could do whatever you wanted at any time, find your own way to have fun, and that the characters were so deep and so interesting. In recent years, playing violent video games has been portrayed as a causation of mental instability, a causation of mass shootings, violent crime, you name it. People have even compared it to drug and substance abuse. They say that the connection between game violence and aggression is as strong as the medical association between cigarette smoking and lung cancer. Well, we don't let our children drink beer or uh, smoke cigarettes and... Really hard to avoid. And then once you start, it's hard to put them down. Yeah. So is crack cocaine. Now, I haven't physically ingested any of my N64 cartridges or game CDs. I imagine it's not recommended. But are they seriously suggesting that drug abuse is as dangerous to the mind as playing violent video games? They are comparing a physical substance that alters the chemical makeup of your body to a visual and interactive medium of entertainment. I think this goes without saying, but that's fucking stupid. To be fair, doing any one thing for too long can be bad for the body and mind. But I ask, how many cigarette, alcohol, and drug-related deaths and crimes are there compared to video game-related deaths and crimes? How many people check into rehab for video games compared to narcotics, alcohol, and other drugs? I don't need to bring up the statistics, we all know the answer. There's also the idea that violent games and media desensitize us to real violence, and that may be the case. But I think we can all agree that our societies are nowhere near as bloodthirsty as they were in the past. I mean, World War II, the Roman Colosseums, the Crusades, endless examples of human brutality that far exceed anything we have today. The idea that we are desensitized by violent media isn't really surprising considering it is part of what makes us human. It's part of our history. And that history is taught to kids, teenagers, and adults across the globe. Children's books are full of gory violence. In Grimm's fairy tales, he said, Hansel and Gretel baked their captor in an oven. High school reading lists, he said, contain violence from Homer, Dante, and Virgil to the savage murder of one of the maroon children in Lord of the Flies. Fox News even linked these mass murderers together through the common trend of them all playing video games. But too often, does the media focus on the most non-important factors? That that young man uh, who locked himself in a basement and played video games hour after hour after hour, uh, watching, uh, you know, and simulating murder hour after hour after hour after hour, didn't desensitize him? Wait, how long was he locked in his basement? Hour after hour after hour after hour after hour after hour. And he's been locked in his room playing violent video games for the past several years and has no human contact. Gee. Maybe the fact that the guy went years without contacting another human being was a more important factor than him playing violent games. Isolation can do terrible things to the mind. You're insane. Isolation can do that to the mind. But I mean, I would guess that the bigger cause of these types of situations are the shooter. I mean, it's already the news reports coming out that I mean, he probably was paranoid, schizophrenic, and so forth. And looking for whether or not video games contribute to that really seems to be looking at perhaps the smallest effect here, if any. In fact, it'd be more unusual to find one of these shooters if, that they didn't play video games. So really finding that they play violent video games is not particularly surprising, considering if you take a random sample of any males, most of them are going to report playing violent video games. Perhaps it'd be a better use of our time to look at this person's medical and criminal history and find answers through there. Maybe Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris shot up Columbine because they were bullied, because they hated school. Maybe they were prescribed drugs that negatively affected their minds or how easy it was for them to obtain the weapons. Maybe it was just the perfect storm of so many factors and not just a single one that is the root cause of any tragedy. It doesn't matter how many psychological case studies you do into these people, because the bottom line is it takes a very disturbed and disconnected mind to carry out this type of atrocity. I think the important question is not, what role did video games play in this shooting? The important question is, what role did the media play in this shooting? Because they would love to have you believe that they are just reporting the facts of these shootings, these murders, that they're doing their journalistic duty. But why then? 
Do we have and need such extensive coverage into every minute detail of these murderers' lives and broadcast them hour after hour after hour after hour? It's a form of glamorization, publicity, and infamy that these psychopaths seek, and the media gives it to them. Why does the media give out the names and faces of the perpetrators far more often than those of the victims? Because it makes for a better story. I would argue the media's effect on mass shootings is far greater than that of all violent video games. I had 20 years of mass murders, throughout which I have repeatedly told CNN and our other media, if you don't want to pro propagate more mass murders, don't start the story with sirens blaring. Don't have photographs of the killer. Don't make this 24-7 coverage. Do everything you can not to make uh, the body count the lead story. Do localize this story to the affected community and make it as boring as possible in every other market. Because every time we have intense saturation coverage of a mass murder, we expect to see one or two more within a week. But now I'm no crime or psychology expert, but I believe most violent crimes are carried out because the person in question is in desperate need, wants attention, is fucked in the head, or really, really pissed off about something. I say leave the details for the investigators and focus more on the victims, giving them the support and attention that they need to move on with their lives. If these media outlets claim to be doing the right thing in what they cover, they should be helping the victims and giving little to no information about the perpetrator. So at this point, we're going to talk real statistics, real studies, and pry open the scientific truth of the matter. In my research, many scientists and psychologists believe in the correlation of violent video games and mass shootings, and many others do not believe in that. A lot of reports found or suggested a link between playing these games and aggressive behavior, which I think is a given for almost any type of game. I mean, just about everyone is going to get aggravated or frustrated when they land on Boardwalk. This latest study says no, finding, quote, that aggressive thoughts and actions don't come from violent contents in games. Instead, it's being bad at playing difficult games that gives rise to real-world aggression. Maybe if you're predisposed to aggressive behavior, you're interested in, theoretically, in, in violent video games because it speaks to your <laughs> aggressiveness. Yeah. And as the old saying goes, guns don't kill people, lag does. I'm sure everyone who's ever played an online game has run into lag, glitches, rubber banding, hackers, or any number of frustrating elements. And naturally, those things are going to make you frustrated, which could lead to aggression. But aggressive behavior isn't inherently bad. When I play Mario Party, you bet your ass I'm gonna get aggressive and going for the star. Even so, correlation is not causation. And just because something triggers aggressive behavior does not automatically mean it triggers real-life violence as well. Now, originally I planned on listing numerous sources which would confirm what I'm saying in here, but this video is going on pretty long and I think it's about time for me to wrap it up. What it boils down to, everyone, is violent crime is down. Fact. Juvenile arrests are down. Fact. And video game sales, even for violent ones, have skyrocketed in the last 20 years. Fact. And that is the truth of the matter. I can't imagine what more study we could have other than the fact that the games are more popular and crime is down. In conclusion, all these anti-gamer articles and reports have yet to actually prove a correlation between the violent video games and violent real-world consequences. This archaic opinion that violent video games cause real-life violence is mainly held by people who don't understand the medium, by aging politicians, out-of-touch reporters, people without credibility, authority, or experience, and even fucking snakes. Until science proves otherwise, most reasonable people, and especially gamers themselves, will believe what science, truth, and reliable research says we should believe. Unless they come up with some revolutionary new evidence that changes what we think, these anti-gamer articles and reports should fizzle out. This 40-year war against gaming should come to an end in the unpredictable future. Until the next big thing comes around to threaten the very fabric of society, as it always has.
This video was sponsored by JP Fitness. If you're interested in practical and scientific knowledge of keeping your body healthy, working out, nutrition, JP Fitness has an incredibly underrated YouTube channel, and I highly recommend checking him out. Links will be in the description and on screen. Leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. This is The Act Man, signing out. Peace!